I lived in Japan for around 10 months a couple of years back as part of a study abroad program during my placement year for university. I lived in Hiroshima, and pretty much every Japanese person I met was exactly how you would expect them to be, generous and respectful. All except this one old lady who just so happened to live in the apartment next to me. It was about a month after I'd been in Japan, I'm originally from Northern Ireland so it was quite an adjustment to make, when our group of gaijins decided we were going to go to the Saijo Sake Festival. For those who don't know, this is a huge rice wine drinking festival where, from what I now understand, everyone goes and gets extremely drunk. As men of fine taste and culture, we sampled many different kinds of sake from all over Japan and got totally wasted. Then we all took the train home back to our apartments. I can't remember anything apart from calling my girlfriend at the time and passing out on my futon. Normal stuff. Skip to 6 a.m. the next morning when my loud as hell doorbell wakes me up. Keep in mind my apartment is extremely small so the noise is extremely loud. I check the time and am confused as hell, but assume it's just my friend from downstairs who wants to talk about last night. I look through the peephole in my door and see a police officer standing there. The first thought that goes through my mind is, Taylor, what the hell have you done when you were drunk last night? But at the same time, I was so sure I just fell asleep right away. I talk to the guy using a translation app, and he basically tells me there's been a noise complaint. Strange, considering the fact all I did was make a phone call and fall asleep. Anyway, the guy sees how confused I am and kinda just sees there must have been a mistake and leaves. I'm honestly still drunk and just super confused, but the day carries on as normal. The next morning, 6 a.m., doorbell rings. I already kind of assumed what it was going to be this time and what do I see through the peephole this time. Two police officers. Same conversation goes down and I convince them that there's been no noise. I literally walk them into my apartment to show them how I fell asleep watching Netflix. They tell me at this point it's the neighbor, whom I've never met, who is making the complaints. At this point, I think she's just a bitch or maybe racist. I ask the guy at my uni who takes care of all the foreign students about this and he tells me that I'm getting moved apartments to a room on the floor below. I'm pretty pissed because I just settled into my new space, but whatever. He plans on coming tomorrow morning with the landlord to move my stuff out and check if my new room is okay. Have you ever been woken up by something in the middle of the night that really screws you up? I went to sleep on time that night in preparation for the people helping move my stuff out. So naturally at 3 a.m. I'm fast asleep, then suddenly. My doorbell is just constantly ringing. It's deafening and, of course, has woken me up straight away. I can't even begin to tell you how scared I was. I couldn't even move. After about a minute of what felt like incessant noise, complete silence. I make my way over to the front door to look through the peephole and I see nothing. But I just know it's this psycho neighbor. Nothing else happens that night and I eventually get back to sleep. I wake up the next morning still kind of shaken, but it's cool because my boys are coming around soon. I keep walking out the front to check if they're downstairs and quickly closing my door behind me because I don't know what this woman will try if she sees me. I walk into my room, and the sliding door to my balcony is open, and there I see her for the first time. She literally wrapped her body around the fence that separates our balconies while keeping her footing on her side and is just staring right at me. We stare at each other for a second, and then she quickly whips back around onto her side. Literally two seconds later, my doorbell rings, Thank God it turns out to be the people to help move my stuff, and I tell them what's up and hastily move downstairs to my new room. Outside of her turning up at my new room once and asking if the police had come there, I was able to avoid her from then on. I guess the police decided to start ignoring her calls. When I was 11, almost 12, the woman living above me was a coke dealer. The night of my 12th birthday, she went missing. Not long after, her boyfriend came down to ask if he could use our phone. This was 2004, so having a cell phone was more of an exception than a rule, at least in my area. For a little context, I was home alone at the time while my mom was at work about a five minute walk away. My mom had let our neighbor and her boyfriend come in to use our phone several other times before, so I assumed nothing was wrong with it and let him in bringing him into the living room, which is towards the front of our apartment, to use the phone in there. He picked up the receiver, dialed a number, waited a few seconds, then hung up the phone. He did this a couple more times before the front door of the building opened, 
You can easily hear the front door open from where we were. It's a heavy door. The walls are thin. And the way our building is set up, it's a small, old, single-family house converted into apartments. My and my mom's apartment was the only one on the first floor. And our upstairs neighbor's apartment was the only one above us. Irrelevant, but there was also a much smaller apartment below us. My neighbor's boyfriend looked at me, put his pointer finger to his lips, like he was trying to shush me, and told me not to tell anyone he was there before speed walking to my room at the other end of the apartment. I watched my bedroom door close right before there was a loud, hard, cop-like knock on the door. My jaw dropped as I opened the door to see a cop. He asked if my neighbor's boyfriend was there and being scared I stammered out, yeah, he just went into my room. The officer asked if he could come in, which I agreed to, and as he was coming in, he asked if I could let his partner in through the back door and lead them to my room. We walked together to the back of the apartment, and I let his partner in. The back door to the apartment was right next to my bedroom door, but we had to walk around the kitchen table to get there. There was just barely enough space between the two doors to fit a narrow rectangular table against it without blocking the path to either door. After I let them into my room, I watched as they pulled my neighbor's boyfriend out of my bedroom closet. As they brought him out of my room and towards the back door, which just led to an enclosed fire escape, they told me to go wait in the living room while they brought him out the back door. I walked back to the living room, and after they closed the door, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I could hear the distinct sound of metal clicking and quickly realized that he had just been handcuffed. Still scared, I waited for the police car to drive away before grabbing my keys making sure the back door was locked and locking the front door on my way out before running to my mom's work, crying. Pretty sure I cut the five-minute trip into about two minutes, and I've never been a fast runner. I was fueled entirely on adrenaline and fear at that point. When I told her what had happened, my mom was pissed that he had used me the way he had, hiding out in a child's bedroom closet of all places to try to keep the cops from finding him. She gave me a short but gentle lecture that night about not letting people in to use the phone, telling me that I was not to let people use our phone, even if I knew them unless she was home. I don't want to know what exactly he was wanted for, nor do I want to know what would have happened if the cops had not shown up. I don't know if he had known that the cops were on their way and had come to my apartment specifically to hide from them, or if he was up to something else and knew it was the cops when the front door of the building opened. My husband and I moved into this house about nine months ago. At first, the neighbors seemed okay. We are the high and buy type. There is a woman who lives directly across the street. I'll call her Lucy. On Mother's Day, as my husband and I were leaving for brunch, Lucy wished me a happy Mother's Day, and I wished her the same. Lucy began approaching our driveway as we started to pull off. I didn't want to be rude, so I rolled down the window and told her we were in a hurry and we could talk when I returned. She became hysterical, yelling obscenities and throwing her hands in the air. My husband pulled off. When we returned, we noticed three of our four planters on pedestal stands located outside the front door were turned over. As we got out the car, she ran out of the house and stood at the end of her driveway. She didn't say anything. She just watched us. We decided to go to the store, replace the planters, and clean everything up when we put up the new planters. We also decided to get six Wi-Fi security cameras to put in all of our windows in case she pulled something like that again. When we pulled up, Lucy ran out again, but this time she brought a chair to the end of her driveway to watch us. As we were cleaning up and replacing the planters, a neighbor came to speak to us. He told us that the landlord should have warned us about Lucy, that Lucy sometimes does things like that if she feels slighted or disrespected. Our response was, we're not there for her entertainment or companionship and she needs to stay away from our property. When we began installing the cameras, she went back into the house. The next day when we left for work, Lucy ran outside in a nightgown and stood at the end of the driveway with her arms folded. When we returned home, we saw the planters were moved but not knocked over. This time we weighted them down with rocks. We looked at the video and saw two girls about ages six and eight come from Lucy's house. They tried to push over the planters. When they didn't succeed, they went back to Lucy's house. We called the police to get the incidents on record in case Lucy decided to escalate. For the next two months, every time there was movement in the front of our house, if she was home, Lucy would run outside. 
We decided to ignore her since it was clear she was mentally unstable. One day when we came home from work, she blocked our driveway with her car. We called the police who made her move it but did nothing else. We explained the situation to the officer who stated, we should just keep records of her behavior and call if she makes contact with us. A week later she blocked our driveway with her car again. We called the police again. This time they gave her a ticket. Lucy continued to run outside any time there was movement, but now she also would pull up in her vehicle about a minute before us, wait in her car, and get out when we got out. This happened no matter what time we got home after work. One night we noticed she was pulling out of a driveway at the end of the block. After this, we decided to use another entrance into the subdivision. This worked for about a week. Then she sat outside of that entrance and followed us in. I began videotaping these incidents with my camera. A month ago is when things really escalated. I came home for lunch and there was a huge trailer blocking my driveway. I asked the driver to move and he refused, stating his friend was visiting Lucy. I told him to move or I would call the police. He moved, but then moved back once I parked my car. I called the police and the number on the side of the trailer. The owner stated the trailer should not have been in a residential area and apologized. The police ticketed the trailer and made the driver leave. The man visiting Lucy was arrested for outstanding warrants for unauthorized entry and criminal trespassing. About a week after this incident, she followed us into the subdivision, parked her car, and ran to the end of our driveway. She yelled about us contacting the owner of the trucking company and how stupid we were for doing it. She turned around and went to her driveway when she saw I had my cell phone recording her. We called the police who took another report and warned her to stay away from us and the house. She went on about how we didn't own the house and how she could go anywhere she wants to on our property. The officer warned her that if she does come on our property, she could be arrested. About a week ago, a group of kids came on our property, began fighting on the front lawn, and throwing trash everywhere. Lucy sat on the porch and yelled for the kids to yell louder and fight more. We called the police. The officer told us they were just kids playing, and they all denied being sent by Lucy. We showed the officer the video, and he still refused to do anything. He told Lucy to stay away from us, a warning other officers have made, and she ignores. The day after this, it was 40 degrees, Lucy came outside and stood in the middle of the street watching us. She has continued to do this every day, including this morning. It is obvious the police are not going to do anything. We have three more months left on our lease. Needless to say, we're going to move. But until then, we will keep calling the police and saving the video recordings of her stalking and harassing us.